Most audiences agree that jump scares are the bane of modern horror movies. Too many use them as a shortcut to frights, sacrificing mood and atmosphere for a quick bang that does nothing but startle. Like any tool in an artist's arsenal, however, it all comes down to execution. A well-placed jump can serve as a satisfying payoff to slow-burning tension, or it can rocket you forward into a story with a burst of thrilling adrenaline. If you're curious about how an often misused trope can be successful, steal your nerves because we're about to dive headfirst into some of the best scares that will make you jump out of your seat. What's in the boat? Jaws invented the summer blockbuster by deftly blending charming humor, rollicking adventure, and insightful character moments, all punctuated by a few well-placed scares. One of them in particular never fails to make audiences scream. Before the movie has even shown us the shark, Hooper, played by Richard Dreyfuss, takes a scuba dive to investigate an abandoned fishing boat. Just as he reaches out to check a tooth lodged in the mangled hole, well… <laughs> After being unsatisfied with the scare in test screenings, Spielberg reshot the scene in editor Verna Field's swimming pool at his own expense. He was determined to get the timing just right, and all that effort was worth it. Jaws still plays on big screens most summers, and you can reliably watch the crowd ripple with shock even four decades later. Raptor in the Shed Nearly 20 years after Jaws, Spielberg unleashed another adventure blockbuster that combined action with jump-out-of-your-skin scares. While most of the park's dino denizens are deadly in their own right, there's one in particular that has us terrified of maintenance sheds all these years later. Throughout the movie, characters speak of velociraptors in hushed tones. Dr. Grant is clearly horrified to learn they're being bred in the park, and game warden Robert Muldoon warns everyone of the danger they present. But it isn't until Ellie Sattler, played by Laura Dern, ventures into a maintenance shed that we see just why the adult raptors are so deadly. Mr. Hammond, I think we're back in business. <laughs> It's cool if you peed your pants a little. It's kind of a rite of passage. Closet Corpse Gore Verbinski's remake of the Japanese movie Ringu, 2002's The Ring, is a quiet, eerie story with no gore or explicit violence in sight. It relies on uncanny imagery and unsettling sounds to create an oppressive atmosphere of dread. This makes it all the more startling when Verbinski does sneak in one big jump where you least expect it. In a scene that otherwise lacks any serious tension, Ruth Embry, portrayed by Lindsay Frost, recounts the story of finding her daughter's twisted corpse. Without warning, Verbinski cuts to… I saw her face. The movie never relies on jump scares afterward, but the fear that this early shock might be repeated serves to enhance the tension all the way to the haunting final frame. Don't you understand, Rachel? She never sleeps. The thing behind Winkies. While surrealist auteur David Lynch has long been recognized as a master of the unsettling and the uncanny, none of his films would comfortably fit in the horror category. That's what makes it extra startling when he does go for moments of all-out terror, as he does in Mulholland Drive. Sitting in Winky's Diner, Dan and Herb, played by Patrick Fischler and Michael Cook respectively, discuss a nightmare the former had about a man that he can see through the walls. I had a dream about this place. Oh, boy. See what I mean? <laughs> okay. So you had a dream about this place. What begins as a fairly lighthearted conversation grows increasingly unnerving as Dan compares the dream to reality. The two men walk to the back of the diner and, in typical Lynchian fashion, some truly creepy stuff ensues. It's a simple enough moment, but highly effective in capturing the surreal yet mundane logic of a nightmare. Death from Above Alfred Hitchcock's suspense masterpiece Psycho laid the foundation for the entire slasher film genre, but it's mainly remembered for one particular sequence — the iconic shower scene. However, one Psycho scene remains a startling surprise for newcomers and fans alike. When private investigator Milton Arbogast, portrayed by Martin Balsam, enters the Bates house looking for clues, Hitchcock begins establishing a tension that's vaguely unsettling, catching Arbogast glancing at each door and hallway before he begins slowly and carefully climbing the stairs. Suddenly… Arbogast's stun tumble down the stairs was achieved by standing balsam in front of a rear projection falling shot. The result feels just slightly wrong, enhancing the feeling that we, too, have just been the victim of a sneak attack. The Phantom Unmasked It may be tempting to cite jump scares as a symptom of Hollywood running out of ideas, but they're almost as old as movies themselves. 
and the good ones still work. One great example of this trick comes from Universal's 1925 silent production of The Phantom of the Opera. Lon Chaney was the first major icon of horror films, rising to prominence during the silent era as the man of a thousand faces. He crafted his own makeup effects, and there was seemingly no end to the amount of discomfort he was willing to put himself through to spook his fans. For Phantom, he devised an elaborate construction of wires and paint that gave him an alarmingly skull-like face. Chaney's creepy mug is first revealed when Christine, played by Mary Philbin, slowly works up the courage to pull off his mask. Stories of viewers fainting in the theater at the film's premiere quickly became something of a Hollywood legend. How much Universal may have played up these reports and advertising remains difficult to say, but it's undeniable that the shock remains effective, even 90 years later. Thanks for watching! Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too!